Okay, what's up guys? Jacob here with Smetting Performance. Today we are working on the biggest engine that I have ever built in my life. This is going to be a 632 cubic inch big block Chevy. And it doesn't matter what dimension or spec or stat we're talking about with this build, it's massive. The cam duration, the stroke, the bore, I mean the cylinder heads, everything on this is just as big as it can possibly get. So this is going to be a really cool build and I'm really excited to see what this thing turns into. For the foundation, we're using a Dart Big M Big Block Chevy engine block. It's a 10.2 deck height motor, which means the deck is a lot taller than factory Big Block Chevy. OEM Big Block Chevy is 9.8 deck. And basically what that means is from the center point of this crankshaft journal, the distance to the flat parallel of the deck. So OEM Big Block is 9.8, this is 10.2, so we have 400 thou more deck. Why do you want that? Well, when you're running a really big stroke crankshaft, you need it because now we can push the piston further up into the engine block and put more stroke in it that way. So, Dart Big M 10.2 deck. The bore on this is actually not the biggest we've done. This is a 4.600 bore um, on our short deck, the 9.8, standard height 572. We actually run a 4.630. So, that is the one stat I lied about that's not the biggest we've done. Anyways, 4.6 bore with a 4.75 stroke crankshaft. Four and three quarter. So, here is that piece actually, but we'll get to it later. Back on the block. This is a three galley oiling system, so it's very efficient oiling. And you'll hear that term, you'll hear two galley and three galley. And basically what that means is oil goes into the pump, through the filter, back into the engine block, and then it goes into the galleys. Now you have the third galley, which is this guy. This galley is dedicated to just providing oil for the crankshaft main bearings, rod bearings, and camshaft. Then you have these other first and second galleys, and these provide oil to the lifters, which then shoot oil up into the cylinder heads for the rockers. So, this is also known as priority main oiling because this one oil galley, all it does are the mains, the crank, the rod, and the cam. So, really good oiling system in this block. Something else Dart did is they have a lifter crossover in the front so remember, we have these two lifter, these two oil galleys feeding oil to the lifters. However, however, if there's ever a pressure differential, they have this crossover so they can stabilize and equal out the pressure in each bank. On um, Big Block Chevy, the distributor goes in the rear and it gets its lubrication for the distributor gear from that galley of the lifters. Now, a regular Big Block Chevy that's not a dart block is gonna have its crossover in the rear and then the oil is gonna come forward as pressure is built. Because this dart has the crossover in the front, the pressure comes from the front of the engine and then works its way rearward to the distributor. And this is good because if for whatever reason the distributor does not have a perfect fit in the block, it might bleed a little oil pressure off and this bank of lifters, especially these last two, might starve for oil at extremely high RPM. So by moving it to the front, we get maximum oil to the lifters for total valve train control at high RPM. Another really cool thing with this block is that it has massive four bolt half inch main caps and it actually has splayed bolts on the center three. Now, if you look on this front main cap, these bolts go straight up and down and as well as they do on the fifth main cap. But the center three, which are the most stressed, have that splayed outer bolt on each side. And basically, long story short, that makes these caps much more strong and more rigidly attached to the block. We also have massive half inch fasteners on all of them. So this block is just totally overkilled and super strong and will not even know that it's being pushed at the power levels we're gonna push it at with our 632 cubic inch engine. This block is fully machined and is almost ready for assembly. We parallel decked it in our Rottler CNC machine. We gave it a really nice smooth surface finish and made sure that each cylinder is gonna have the exact same deck height so we have a really nice equal compression ratio throughout the motor. Second, we did a torque plate plateau hone so our hone job is extremely slick and will promote a really good ring seal when we fire this engine up. It'll keep the rings nice and happy. But today, my next step in this build process is actually gonna be dry fitting the components in this block. Because we are running a massive four and three quarter stroke crankshaft, 
this crankshaft with this throw is going to sling the rod. Remember this part of the rod, this is called the big end. It attaches right there on the crank. That rod is getting moved in a huge circle throughout this engine. You can imagine it swinging around in here. So, because it's has such a big stroke, it's going to be hitting the oil pan rails, part of the cylinder down here, possibly up here. It could maybe hit the camshaft. So we have to do a lot of test fitting and dry fitting so I can come back and clearance things and make all of this fit nicely together as tightly as possible. So. I'm just going to put a set of rough bearings that we have. That basically means bearings that will never go in an engine. They are meant to only do this. Um, doesn't matter if they're a little dirty or the clearance isn't right. So I'm going to put rough bearings in the mains and the rods. Nothing will be assembled with more than just a little bit of light WD-40 because again, everything's going to get taken back apart, completely clean because I'm going to be, you know, grinding, getting metal shavings everywhere. And then we'll put everything back together, put assembly lube and everything and then it will get final assembled. So, first step, let's drop the crank in it and then we can start stuffing rods and pistons. Crankshaft is in the motor. Next, we're gonna put the rod and piston in. This is a 6.7 inch long H beam big block rod with our flat top JE 2618 forged piston. Motor is gonna be about 10 and a half to one compression. Um, kind of perfect for a street car. It'll run on pump gas. This engine is going to be EFI, so I'm a little more comfortable running hotter compression than normal for a big block Chevy on the street, but this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna start with just one assembly. We'll put it in, spin the crank over, see where it's hitting, and then head into the machine shop room. This might be kind of hard for y'all to tell or appreciate, but that piston goes way down into that hole. So there it is at the top, and then we have four 0.75 inches of stroke pulling that sucker down there and over here you can really see what I mean by we're gonna have to clearance the block because the rod comes around and just clears there actually okay so it's hitting down in there I see and then if we come up this way it actually clears there okay so the only place we're hitting is the block basically right down in there. Y'all can see it where the rod comes around. Pop. A little tap right there. After looking at it a little bit more and studying where the rod is hitting the block, what's happening is, if we can imagine our rod right here in the engine, the crankshaft stroke, you know, it starts up here, comes down and around, and then it comes up here to where the camshaft would be and it's this corner of the rod that's hitting. So, originally I thought the rod was gonna come so far around here and hit the block over here. However, this dart block is already clearance for this much stroke. So, we're actually gonna skip this step for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and install the cam bearings in the camshaft. And what we're actually gonna do is mill this shoulder off the rod right here just a little bit until it can clear the camshaft and engine block. Um, we do this on a 427 small block Chevy. It's very common when you run a standard location cam tunnel on these blocks. They make a raised cam version as well that gives you a little bit more clearance, but for this application, this cam tunnel location is fine. And by us milling just a little bit off this corner, it will not affect the strength of the rod at all whatsoever. They make rods that are called stroker rods that they actually already come in and mill this off so i'm going to go ahead and do that after i put the camshaft in 
here's a pretty good shot. This is the rod that was in that cylinder that was hitting. And it's kind of hard to make out. I'll probably get a little pin. But right here on the corner of the rod, it's just slightly discolored where it was hitting the engine block. So that shows you how little of a sliver we're going to need to mill off these rods. Okay, fast forward a little bit. Cam bearings are now installed on this block. These are coated dart cam bearings and they actually have a groove cut in the back of them. And they have three points of oil entry. That one's gonna be hard to see, but there's a third one up there. Anyways, awesome bearing. So, speaking of oversized everything, here's that camshaft. Duration at 50, 271 intake, 285 exhaust, 110 lobe separation with 680 thousandths of valve lift. This is actually a hydraulic roller camshaft. So, this camshaft and this engine are gonna have no valve train maintenance. It's not like a solid roller where you have to set lash every however many miles. This is gonna be a one and done set type deal. So this is super nice. It has a really special ramp on the cam profile itself that's gonna support a really, or it's going to provide us with a very gentle and controlled valve train. So I'm gonna pop this in. I'm gonna go ahead and mill probably 100 thou off that corner and then we'll reinstall the rod and piston and see how we're looking. I almost forgot. This camshaft, while it is a billet steel core so we can run good high pressure springs and not hurt it, it actually has a cast gear pressed onto it. So you can run a standard melanized steel distributor gear and not have to worry about running something special like bronze and having it wear out. And you can actually kind of see where that rear piece is pressed onto the cam. Right there you can see the core and whatnot. So pretty cool trick. Okay, fast forward a little bit on the 632 engine. All of the rods are now clearance to clear the block in the upper portion. And now we need to actually clearance the block to clear the rods. And you can see this rod, for example, the block has these casting lugs and the rod comes over and just hits them. So remember, all of this is rough assembled. We have trash bearings, no rings. The rods are, however, torqued down to specs. We get an exact measurement, and now we're gonna come back and start clearancing the block. rotating assembly all clearanced inside of a big M dart block it's a uh, it's pretty crazy that this thing has a four and three quarter stroke shoved into an engine block that goes in a car let me know if this was y'all's engine what car would you even want to put this into or would you put this into this is going to be about an 800 horsepower naturally aspirated pump gas street motor and I want to know what car you think it should go into all right, so now that everything's good, I'm gonna completely tear the short block back down, take all the individual components apart, and thoroughly clean everything for final assembly now. Okay, moving forward, the block is totally cleaned, clearance, machined. You can see our beautiful plateau hone. It's been parallel decked. Cam bearings are already in. All of the parts are nice and clean. These are those real big JE pistons for it. The rods are clean and clearance. The crank is clean, the cam is clean. We're going to get this in paint booth and then it's going to be assembled. Alrighty. There is the finished product for part one of this series. The block is fully machined, it's prepped. All of the hard components are ready for assembly. In part two of this video series, I'm gonna go over bearing clearances, the type of bearings we're going to run, as well as break down the piston rings. You know, how do we gap them? How do we choose them for the application? And then we do the fun part and actually assemble a short block of this monster. 